Well, welcome. I'm Martin Tyner. This is my beautiful wife, Susan. And Hello. here at the Southwest Wildlife Foundation. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of the baby songbirds that we rescue every year. And as you see, we've got some noisy ones right here making quite the ruckus. Got some ground up baby, ground up seed that we feed the babies to get them started on. And then some of the soap dog kibble. Uh, teaching them to eat for themselves is a slow process. Hopefully my hand won't be in your way. Let me change the size. Okay. I'll just use my finger. So here, here's the, now these are sparrows. If they are, they may be English house sparrows. They may be crown sparrows. There's a variety of these are little sparrows that we're feeding right here. Now let me talk a little bit about what to do and not to do uh, when you have when you find baby birds. Now, first and foremost, if you find baby birds that are about this size, uh, young birds, they grow very quickly. They outgrow the nest. This is normal. They end up on the ground below the nest. This is normal. Uh, as long as they're not in a life-threatening situation, please leave them and let mom and dad just finish feeding them up. And really, at this age, they're just starting to fly around a little bit uh, chasing their parents. And so these guys are about ready to go out to an, an outside facility where they can uh, have some, some room to stretch the wings and start flying. Right now I'm encouraging them to peck at the dish. The goal is to go from four steps to just... They need to learn to start eating seed and things. So we're kind of in transition. Yes, we've got to get them feed themselves, so that's really important. And they'll be going out to a flight chamber here very, very soon. And our next little group, what we have in here, we have an Inca dove, which is just a small southern dove. We find this in the south, southwestern United States. Um, they're very, very cute. And uh, a, some baby quail. Now, the, both of these came down from the St. George area, which is south of us. Uh, the baby quail, uh, their mother was run over by a car. And so the people found the dead mom and little babies kind of huddling around mom. And so they picked up the little babies. And we've had them for a week or two. How long have we had the quail? I'd have to look on the calendar to see. I lose track of time way too fast. And, and of course the dove, we have to feed a little bit differently. It gets um, uh, the exact uh, bird diet. But it, this little guy right now, this little Inca dove, is... Very close. It's picking uh, food on its own, and the baby quail are certainly picking food on its own. And so they'll be ready to go back to the wild very, very shortly. Again, please, if you find baby quail running around and you don't see a dead mom, don't pick them up, don't chase them down, don't bring them home. Uh, these are really tough to raise, especially if you only have one. Uh, because what they do is they encourage each other to pick and eat. And, and so with the baby quail picking at the food and the dove picking at the food, they actually encourage each other. And if you have just one baby quail, boy, that's, it's almost impossible to raise them. So don't just bring them home. That's, that's not a good thing to do. What do we have in? These were just brought in to us uh, just a few minutes ago. Again, we're not sure. These are too young to tell, but my guess is they're probably sparrows. Now what Susan's got right here, this is a little goldfinch. We suspect it has we, a yellow chest. Yeah, we think it's a little goldfinch. We're not positive at this age. It's a little tough to tell. Set it up here. Okay. I can put both hands so it doesn't pop out. And again, uh, its nest was blown down, and um, there was no way to for mom and dad to care for it. And so, again, brought up to us, and, and we are in the process of hand raising it. And you just have to feed it often. I don't know if you can see. See that little bulge on its side of its throat right there? That's the crop on the right side of its throat. Mm -hmm. And that's where it stores food before it digests the food. And, and so we, we have to be very careful with the, the quantity that we feed them. We don't want to feed them and pack them up to the, to the point that they can't digest. And we're going to feed the little hummingbird. You want me to okay. bring it up closer? Yeah, please bring up the hummingbird. This is a baby hummingbird. Again, uh, this little one's uh, nest blew out of the tree, and um, it was not able to be 
uh, left with mom and dad. So we're we're mom and dad hummingbirds right now. Now what she's dipping the the syringe in is actually some ground up bugs because they do eat a lot of insects. So not only do we have a hummingbird diet that we feed them, which is kind of like nectar, but we also feed them insects. And so this little hummingbird's doing quite well. Yeah, they need Unf insects for protein. Yeah, unfortunately, what we're talking about here, guys, and people don't realize this, this little baby hummingbird, we're looking at every 15 minutes to feed. And you do, and I, I apologize for the for the red light here. We have heat lights on everything. We try to keep everything at about 90 degrees because they do need to be kept warm. And if they're not kept warm enough, then they can't digest food appropriately. So it is really quite complicated to, to care for these little babies. These are the new ones that just came in, and they haven't eaten for me yet. Um, yeah, these just barely barely got to us a few minutes ago. Oh, there you go. It just took a piece. Guess we can get his buddy to eat. Mm -hmm. Buddy's got his head underneath. Bring your head up. And again, little tiny things. Nest blew out of the tree. Um, they were found in a parking lot. It was cold. It was up about 50 miles north of here. The people were kind enough to bring them to us. So that we can uh, sorry, I try to help them. Let me move this yeah, out. Bring it up so we can see. Let me move it Hold to it. the open. Can okay. I set it down somewhere? Set it wherever you want, sweetie. Oh, the light would be better away from the red light. Okay. Now this one on top hasn't eaten yet. So I am going to try and get it to open its mouth. Hopefully I won't hide the baby too much from view. And put a little piece of food in his mouth to get him started. There we go. Okay, there we go. Nice. Now he wants to eat. If I, unless I'm feeding the same one again and I lose track so easy. Let's see, what about you? There we go. And we'll put him back. That's good for now. And we'll feed him again very soon. Again, we're, at this age, we're, we're looking at every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes, somewhere in that neck of the woods. If they eat well, we can probably go a half hour. And this is, and guys, this is around the clock. This is, this is a 24 hours a day kind of an operation to, to care for all of the, the little ones that we have here today. And so, can't see anything else? there. So I just covered them back up. Okay. Just so, so this is our 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 springtime everyday job to to care for these little guys. Of course, this is volunteer. I shouldn't say job, but they. It is quite rewarding when we get an opportunity to get them back in the wild where they belong. A little bit of food left to see if they want to pick at it. This is something they learned too to pick at this. It was not natural. Mm -hmm. The quail is feeding himself, but not quite enough. You mean the dove? The dove, yeah. I get confused. You can see he's picking at the, the seeds and stuff too. You can see him pecking at the other's mouths and starting to wave his wings. That means he's he wants somebody to feed him. So I will, and they usually put their heads inside their parents' mouth, which is what I'm using my fingers as like the beak of the parents to give them a little food that way. But I had to wait for him to be ready. First few days we had him, it was not easy. I had to force feed him each meal. He wanted nothing to do with me. But then eventually he figured out it was good. You see the little yellow color, so it might be a goldfinch. Or yeah, it looks like a little goldfinch. We have hard a, to say for sure. We had a, a whole batch of goldfinches in a few weeks ago. Anyway, I hope that helps you understand a little bit about about uh, other baby birds. Again, when they're mostly feathered out like this, and you find them on the ground, please don't take them up, bring them home. As long as you're not in a life-threatening situation, they're just too big to be in the nest. This is normal when they're. The size of these little uh, little sparrows down here, uh, if they are on the ground, then an intervention needs to be done, whether we uh, get them back in the nest or you get them to a wildlife rehabilitator to, to care for. They're, they're too small uh, to, to survive out. Even, even at night, they need to be kept warm. And so, you know, if you guys have any questions, uh, please feel free to leave a comment and, and we'll certainly try to answer those questions for you and, and we'll 
talk to you guys soon. Bye, Sue. Bye. See you guys. One quail. There's a little quail. One Inca dove. Take them out to clean your cage. Quail number two. Luckily, we've got enough bushes and weeds to give them some natural cover every Quail couple of days. Quail number three. As we clean. And now, quail number four. This one joined the others just recently. Oh, oh. Ready? Ready? Quail number four. This is a little baby. There you go. Did it along great with the others. I'm learning to eat from the others. Uh, put on their heat light and leave them alone and they will be happy. They're quite wild. I don't know if you can see them in the middle of those branches there. Let's see. They're trying to be really still, pretending to hide. I can see where the baby took off to, but he's in there somewhere. And they cuddle up together. We put the light into the cage because of the little baby. But the bigger ones enjoy it too and we'll sit under it and the baby will cuddle with the others. So they're getting along just fine. We'll let them grow some more. Okay, it's evening. I'm gonna walk into the office quietly. Don't want to scare the birds. I'll be starting to sleep. I think the littlest baby's tucked under the dove's wing. you can see right at the back of the dove's wing is a little quill. There he goes. They're doing really good. I had to give these little guys baths. They had people that had brought them in to us a few days ago had it gotten pretty sticky. So they fed them long enough to, to keep them alive and get them to us, but they had sticky food stuck on them. Okay. The littlest one is a canyon wren. The other two are Sayus Phoebes. the heat lamp on them just to warm them up after their bath. to fly when your feathers are all wet. These guys are all fledglings. 
They'd be out of the nest, hopping around and flying around a little bit. Not real well, but their parents would keep feeding them if it weren't for other predators and scary things. Yeah. Got some of that cat food off of you, huh? with little q-tips that are dipped in water. Of course, they're not going to stick around for us to see. The cage got cleaned a little while ago and they got put back in. But their instincts are to be quite wild. So they try and hide whenever we get close. These are the quails that came in as tiny little babies a few weeks ago. Three of them, and then there is a tiny little baby in here somewhere too with them. He's learned how to eat by watching them. Or maybe the tiny little baby is under the stub's wing. That would be a good bet on him. Oh, he was. He was under the dove's wing. Trying to keep warm. His rescuers called him lucky. The the last few years, you know, with with our YouTube channel, uh, you know, people have come, they've seen the work that we do. They're, they're getting some some information uh, and they need more because, like I said, the the videos that, that we post are, are not meant to teach you how to care for sick inter and orphan wildlife. It's meant to show you that, that there are people out there that do have the skills and expertise to do so. And, and so we, none of my videos were ever meant as an educational video to teach you how to care for sick inter and orphan wildlife. So please don't take it for that. Anytime you come across wild anything, and we, we're going to use birds for, for an example, wild birds, and I don't care if it's uh, uh, a, a little robin that has fallen from its nest or it's, or it's an, uh, an injured eagle that was hit by a car, the first thing you do is don't pick it up. That's rule number one. You don't pick it up. You observe the animal. And you basically get as much information as you can as to your location. If you, if you have a GPS, GPS coordinates are helpful. Um, if you're on the highway and you can see a mile marker, get the mile marker. Is it on the right-hand side of the, of the road, the left-hand side of the road? Uh, any any identifying marks. Um, if, a, if the house with a blue roof uh, and it's 200 yards to the west of that, if you can get good information, that helps a lot. And, and then get on the phone and call someone that could help. Um, even if it's a little robin, and the reason for that is the vast majority of times people are picking up these animals when they actually don't need help. And so let's go, go with a small songbird like a robin to start with. You got a little robin, it's running around your backyard, running around the, the, the city park, or under a, under a nice uh, group of trees or whatever. Birds outgrow the nest. This is normal. Uh, birds up, end up on the ground below the nest. Completely normal. As long as they're not in a life-threatening situation, like in the middle of a road or in a parking lot or where they're going to get killed, uh, we leave them there uh, because mom and dad will continue to come and feed and care for them because it's normal for them to come out of the nest before they can fly. 
this is all in fact right now this time of year you know i have got robins and i have got uh goldfinches and i've got sparrows and i've got everything running around my yard under the lilac bushes and everything in fact when i mow the lawn i have to be very careful not to run over all these babies that are running around the yard uh so so they're just kind of everywhere right now mom and dad are, are feeding them and caring for them and it's wonderful now if it isn't a life-threatening situation then it, then you can especially if it's a small songbird you can move it off to a safe location close to where it was and then call someone to get a little bit of advice now that's that's for the little songbirds um the the, the stuff that's not going to hurt you now when it comes to apex predators like like our little peregrine here i'm pretty girl if it comes to apex predators these can be dangerous to work with especially something the size of an eagle and so if it's a, uh, a large predatory bird, if it's an owl, if it's a, a hawk or a falcon or an eagle, by all means, please don't try to pick it up yourself. Uh, the talons are absolutely razor sharp and they can injure you. Uh, and one of the hardest things that people don't understand is, you know, even this falcon, it, even though its talons are not nearly as big and powerful as an eagle, those will puncture all the way through your hand. And so you get, you, they get this punch right into your hand and these basically puncture into the bowels of the animals they feed on. And so they're, these talons are covered with really, really nasty bacteria. And so you get a puncture wound from a bird of prey like this, and you can get an infection that literally could cause severe injury or, or even death with some of the bacterias that can get into, you, into your system from these talons. And so please, please don't try to pick them up. Um, Call, call your local police dispatch. Don't call 911. 911 is for human emergencies. They get mad at you. But you can call police dispatch. You can call your local wildlife rescue center. You can call your local game warden uh, uh, to, get, to get someone that has the, the skills and expertise to handle these animals.